In this example, we're asked to figure out how much money is in a bank account. Uh, a person deposits $10,000 in a savings account that yields 11% interest per year, compounded annually. So annually, this is going to tell us the amount of time that we have to consider here, or the, the time frame. And we want to know how much is in the account after 30 years if it's left to just sit there. So nothing added to it, nothing taken away from it. Well, how do bank accounts work? Well, let's say that uh, we have the, let's, let's just call this, say, our sequence P. So P of zero is our initial investment. So P for principal in this sense, but it's not going to be principal after this. But P of zero is our initial investment. So we'll call that 10,000. And then what are we going to have after, let's just say, one year? So let's just start writing down what we're going to have in our account after a certain amounts of time. So P of 1, well, that's going to be equal to what we had before. So it's going to be equal to exactly what we had before, plus the interest, right? So the interest is accrued on what we had in our bank account the previous year. So that's 11% of the previous amount. So 11% we have to write as a decimal, of course, right? So this is going to be 0.11 times that same P of zero, okay? And so this ends up being our initial investment, P of zero, times, this can be factored out, right? And we can write this as 1.11, all right, 1.11. Now, what happens at the next stage? Well, after another year, in year two, once our interest is, is paid, right, then what are we going to have? We're going to have the amount that we had from year one, so P, P of one, plus the interest accrued after that to that amount right so so that's another 11 percent of p of one and again we can factor this out and this is going to be uh, p of one if i factor it the same way times 1.11 again so it's the same factor there but then we remember what p of one is so at this point we remember p of one is all this it's p of zero times 1.11 right and so this is really p of zero the initial investment times 1.11 times 1.11 and of course that becomes our initial investment times 1.11 quantity squared okay and so we could probably see where this is going but let's write down one more so p of three after three years how much money are we going to have well we're going to have the previous year p of two plus the interest that we accrue and we know how this is going now so 0 0.11 times p of two Again, we can factor this out, P of 2 times 1.11, right? So there's, there's our amount that we have in year 3. And once again, we can go back and we can plug in our formula for P of 2 in terms of P of 0, in terms of our initial investment. So everything's going back to this initial investment, right? And so at this point, this can be written as P of 2, uh, sorry, it's going to be P of 0 times 1.11 squared and then times another 1.11. And that can, of course, be combined to be P of 0 times 1.11 to the third power. Now, why are we doing this? We are trying to find a formula, right? We're trying to find a formula to represent P of n. And we can see exactly what it's going to be now because we have, we can see, right, that if we, whatever we plug in to this formula, we end up making the exponent on the 1.11. So that's, that's how we compute the interest after uh, n years. It's going to be uh, p of 0, initial investment, times 1.11 to the nth power. So this is our formula. We end up with this closed formula. We, we treated this like a recurrence relation, actually, right? Because from one year to the next, our um, the amount in our bank account depends on what was in there the previous year, right? But then as you stack these up, you end up seeing that this is a geometric progression where our P of N is equal to our initial investment, P of zero, times the interest rate, which is 1.11. So the 0.11 is the interest itself, but we need to keep our principal, right? So 1.11 to the power N. And that right there is a formula, a closed formula, to compute the amount of money in our bank account after N years, right? After N years. Now, the question was to figure out how much money is in our bank account after 30 years. And for that, we need to go back and plug, actually plug this in here, right? Um, the initial, the actual initial investment that we made. So we, what we determine then is after 30 years, uh, P of 30, right? This is the amount of money is going to be our initial investment, 10,000 times 1.11 to the 30th power. All right. 
So we had $10,000 we put in the bank. We left it for 30 years. And I'm going to a calculator now. You can't see it, but we're going to end up having uh, quite a bit of money here. So and we end up with uh, $228,922.97. All right, and so I've rounded that to the nearest cent. I rounded up, actually. Probably your bank, even though it should be rounded up mathematically, probably your bank would round it down. That's uh, an unfortunate reality of how banks operate. But there we go. So this is the amount of money in our bank account that we've just left sitting for 30 years at 11% interest, over $228,000, almost $229,000. All right, but that's that's obtained by, first we, we wrote this as a, uh, recurrence relation and then we were able to write a closed form geometric progression geometric sequence formula and then we just picked out the 30th n equals 30 element of that sequence and so um, that's how much money's in our bank account